how do we design a long-term care insurance? Can, do you want to uh, talk about that? Yeah, long-term care insurance, and that's the trouble because the, the way that the benefits and the products are after the day, there's a lot of different variations to how plans are designed, and that's where the help of an expert who knows how to design these plans is very useful to them. There's a lot of research you can do, but there's still a lot of things that they can help with depending on your situation. Primarily, there's four different models for long-term care. You have what we call a daily reimbursement model. Then you have a monthly reimbursement model. You have what's called an indemnity model and a cash model. Those are the four different models. Let me kind of briefly go through each one. In long-term care, you have what's called a daily benefit amount. Now, a daily benefit amount can be anywhere between $50 and $500, depends on the carrier. Now, the daily benefit amount, it says that is the maximum amount of reimbursement that we will reimburse in any given day of care. So let's assume you have a $300 per day benefit. The cost of care is $200. We will reimburse the $200. The $100 difference is not lost. It's still in your benefit pool. Now, this pool of money is a pool that is designed by your DBA, your daily benefit amount, and your multiplier, which is the years, two years, three years, four years, five years. Let's use five years. You take the number of days in five years, you multiply, let's use 200, and that comes up to $365,000. That's your pool of money. And from that pool, under the daily reimbursement model, we can take from that up to $200 a day for your care. Anything less than that still remains in the pool to be used later. If you have the monthly reimbursement model using that same pool of money, then what happens is you take the $200 a day times 30, just to make it easy, for $6,000 a month. So you have $6,000 a month available for reimbursement during that month. Now, where people look at that model is say, okay, under the daily model, it only reimburses up to 200 But with the monthly model, if I, during that say two days a week, I received not only custodial care, but skill care. Someone come and did a therapy treatment, for example. I come in, that, now the custodial care costs $150. Your skill care costs $300. So the total cost for that day is $450, right? Yeah. Under the monthly reimbursement model, it would reimburse the entire $450. Under the daily, it will only do the $200. The other would be out of pocket. That's where the monthly reimbursement model would go. The third model is called indemnity model, says that using that same t model, the $200 a day, $365 pool, is the $200 a day will be indemnified to you regardless of the cost of care. In other words, if it costs $150, we're still going to indemnify you $200. Okay? Okay. Regarding, anything above $200 is out of pocket, and each day you receive care. So, now, but what, what if you spend $150? Is, then the $50 is in your pocket? Yes. The other $50 you can use for whatever is, is necessary. And, and thanks for bringing that because another issue on indemnity that's important to understand is that on the indemnity model on the IRS tax qualified plan, there's a cap on how much of that is tax free. And okay. this year goes up to $280, I believe, for this year okay. is tax free. So anything you get, you can use for whatever you need, okay. the extra money that you have. Same with if you went into a facility. If you went into an assisted living facility and it cost $3,000 a month in an assisted living facility and your indemnity policy paid you 6000 which it would because you're there for 30 days, right? Mm -hmm. Then they will send you a check for $6,000. Okay. And you would take the 3000 and pay for your benefits and then whatever you want to do with the other three is fine. Other additional care, pay bills, whatever you need, we'll do that for. Okay. Now, the cash model, which is the fourth model, it says that the $6,000, they send you a check the first of the month for $6,000 and you do whatever you want with it. Okay. okay, you can hire friends or neighbors. But of course, you've got to look at each model and there's a cost variable to each one. Yeah, okay. well, let's, go, let, um, let's say that we're doing the cash and then uh, we spend uh, $4,000 and we received $6,000. That $2,000, uh, do we have to declare that uh, in our taxes as an income or? No. It's just... No, it's not. Remember, the IRS has a limit of how much you can. Anything above that okay. window, you can. So if, as long as it's under the $280 a day, okay. for example, no, you wouldn't have to pay any tax on that. You have to identify it on your return as yeah. coming from an ex-qualified, but that's okay. it. Okay. Now, if you had a benefit that was greater than that, then that amount above that would potentially be taxable, but could be offset by medical costs above and beyond that. Okay. So it... Uh, whatever you're getting from the uh, long-term care is considered a medical attention. In other words, if you spend that for your medical care, it's not an income. That's correct. It could yeah. be, it'll be a deduction at deduction. that point, therefore offsetting income. Yeah. 